Hey, party people, welcome to another video. Question of the day. What does ceramics and a blue balloon possibly have in common? Because that is the question I'm going to answer for you today. Now, this is in direct response to Brian A., one of my followers on YouTube, who asked some really seriously great questions. With the attempt to dissect your questions, I'm gonna start with this, waterborne technology. Why is it so unique? Now, just to clarify, this is true waterborne technology. Now, I say true because the chemistry of this, this proprietary chemistry, chemical engineering of this, used a water molecule as the carrier for the other ingredients of this formulation. That is different than, well, other products because some products will say water-based, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same proprietary blend or engineering that this has into it. But I wanna do some really cool demos for you to show you the amazing capabilities of water's ability to absorb heat. Let's get started with our first demonstration. Here I have an ordinary red paper cup. I've got my flame lit. I'm gonna put this cup right over the flame. What I'm trying to illustrate here is what's called the ignition point. The ignition point is the point at which something combustible, flammable like this, catches fire. Now I wanna do this before my smoke alarms go off. I just burnt a hole in the bottom of this cup because it reached the ignition point. Now according to the internet and the research I did, and it was on the internet, so it must be true, ignition point for paper is 451 degrees Fahrenheit, 233 degrees Celsius. That is the point at which something combustible will ignite and flame up when exposed to air and a heat source. Now, I'm gonna take this same paper cup. I'm going to pour some regular tap water into the bottom of this and place it over the flame. The point this will illustrate is the amazing insulator capabilities and specifically what happens is because the hydrogen bonds within water, H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, that makes up a water molecule. Once again, ceramics uses a water molecule as the carrier, hence the amazing heat absorbing capabilities of this polish. The whole time it's been sitting on this flame and it's yet to ignite, why? Well, because all this water in this cup is absorbing the heat generated by this flame. I wanna bring you in for a tighter shot. So there's the flame, continues to heat up. So there it does, it continues to heat up, continues to burn underneath it, but it does not ignite because that water is seriously absorbing Water's amazing. Uh, it's called what it's what's referred to often as hydrogen bonding, and it has this unique capabilities that allows it to be a great heat insulator. Right at that central heat point, the water's heating up more rapidly than everywhere else, but the rest of the water dissipates the heat. It absorbs the heat and it dissipates throughout the remainder of the water. I'm just going to let there uh, sit and burn. Uh, I can see more bubbles forming at the bottom of the cup. Eventually, as I continue to talk, I think we can get that water to fully boil or at least generate some more of those boiling bubbles. But wait, there's more, which brings us back to the balloon. And I'm gonna switch from blue to yellow. This is an ordinary latex balloon. Okay, open flame. Let's see how close I can get to it before it pops. That was dramatic. Let me spark this baby bap up. In the meantime, this continues to heat up. The flame has been going this whole time. So here I have some regular tap water. I've got my uh, turkey baster. Gonna take another yellow balloon. I'm gonna see if this works. I haven't actually tried it yet as far as getting water into a balloon. You would think it'd be easier. Okay, I think that's enough water. Tie a knot in it. And let me bring you in for a close-up view so we can check this out. 
And by the way, this continues to burn. Okay, I'm trying to capture the water line on the balloon. I am uncertain if it's going to actually capture where you can see the actual water line on the balloon. So this has water in it, but it's at the very bottom. It's actually kind of hard to get the water into a balloon that you need to compress with air in order to expand it while simultaneously putting water into it without the ability to do it with pressure. So here we are over the direct flame. Uh, I would say about a half inch uh, from the bottom is the water line. I'm gonna hold the flame and right now this bur and right now this balloon would have burst if it was empty with no water in it. But here I am, I can actually go down onto the flame and nothing is happening. Why? Because of water's amazing ability to absorb the heat that's generated by the flame. So here I am, and by the way, this has been going the whole time. I've had to stop this camera a few times because of, well, it's called logistics. These um, demonstrations, they get a little annoying on this side of the equation. Here we have, I'm gonna continue to let this burn. We'll see what happens. I'll pull you in at the end. If I remember, point is, is I'm pretty sure you can see a burn. I'm curious to see how this makes it through editing process, which will be yours truly. Back to polish, ceramics, the unique attributes of true waterborne chemistry, engineering, call it what you want. The amazing absorbing abilities of water to absorb heat and dissipate it, which is why you can use this polish in direct sunlight. Tom Horvath, the formulator of this product, wasn't necessarily chasing the ability to work in, in direct sunlight. He was actually chasing other problems that he was experiencing as a body shop owner. Solvent-based products that when you use them, they gum up, they get sticky when the paint gets hot. Which, let me ask this, and I think it's a fair question. Let me pull out amongst my arsenal here, Menzerna Heavy Cut Compound more precisely labeled as performance compound. Now the first way you can try to determine if your product of choice is solvent based or, or not is by reading the label. Unfortunately, most manufacturers are not going to label it precisely, but wait for it. This actually says waterborne technology on the front. So if it's waterborne technology, that means it's not solvent borne technology but most manufacturers aren't necessarily gonna label that. So you read the label. If you can't come to a conclusion, you go in for the sniff check. Whoa, okay, that is gonna burn a few brain cells. Heavy, heavy solvent smell. Now solvents will swell the paint. Now if you read the label on some manufacturer's products, it will say do not either apply directly to the paint or do not allow to sit on the paint for a long period of time or dry on the paint. One of the main reasons for that is it will swell the paint and eventually it will do permanent damage to that paint. So in response to yet another one of your questions, Brian, yes, solvents can be damaging to the paint, which is a video series for a whole other time. So we have smell, we have swelling of the paint, we also have this thing called plasticizing. So what happens is you're compounding a car with one of those products. And just to clarify, this is not a compound. It performs like a compound in its amazing cutting abilities, but it's not an actual compound. So plasticizing is what happens. Well, think of it like this. Think of cement when it's wet or think of latex paint, which is water-based. When they're wet, they're water soluble, but when the water evaporates from those mixtures, cement, latex paint, or the solvent evaporates from those mixtures, what happens is it's not reversible any longer. So you have latex paint that can now be washed with water and it doesn't break down. You have cement, obviously, that sets, it cannot break down with water. This stuff, it plasticizes in the seams and crevices and nuances of a car when a technician is buffing the car and that becomes like cement in trying to get it out. But once again, those are some of the problems that Tom was experiencing as a body shop owner. Traditional heavy solvent based products. It reeks, it smells horrid, 
the solvents will swell paint so it becomes um, not so safe when you hand it to a newbie technician that doesn't know what he's doing. Thirdly, it will plasticize um, after the fact as all these solvents evaporate from that product and becomes rock hard in all the seams and crevices of your polish job. If you took all that information and you felt like, okay, that's a lot of information to digest. And we're literally only talking about the unique attribute of true waterborne technology. And yes, by the way, it's still burning and the paper is not burning. And you reduced it down to something as ridiculously simple as this. Why did Tom formulate this product? It was not to compete with that garbage over there. It doesn't mean that's all garbage. It would really largely depend upon your interpretation of garbage. Now, I consider that garbage for very specific reasons. Like, oh, hey, guess what? Uh, we've got our two, three, four products uh, to go from heavy defect removal down to a swirl-free finish. Okay, great, because I want to buy four products instead of one. But then, so many of these manufacturers, they play both sides of the fence. So they'll come out with their multiple product lineup in order for you to achieve desired results. But then, for example, like 3M, they also have their one-step product. So in the event that those three steps don't work for you, well, we've got one step for you. It's like, whoa, well, which is it, 3M? If your one step really works, why do I need three products? Or how about Shoal Concepts? Now, Shoal Concepts has a massive lineup of products, compounds and polishes, but wait for it. They have their real one-step compound. So it's not just a one-step compound, it's a real one-step compound. So once again, Shoal Concepts, which is it? You're gonna play both sides of the fence. So that has to do with intent. Did Tom develop this to make money selling and competing yet the same garbage system, which is multiple products? No, which is why, as he states, we are simple and we are the answer. The answer that these products could not step up and answer for him as a body shop owner. So that's the intent of this. It's like, okay, uh, by the way, bad business model, Tom, because you're selling one product, you're putting all your eggs into one basket, but that's because as a body shop owner, he wanted to step up and answer the problems that the industry was not answering for him. And by the way, have you not given this video a thumbs up yet? All right, party people, thanks for tuning in. What I want you to do, this is your homework assignment. I want you to take the information, yes, still burning, that you have digested or consumed in this video. One thing, what is that one thing that you learned along the way? Or what is that one, two, or three things that you want to shoot into my argument that I think I made a very compelling case for true waterborne technology? What are the ways that you could shoot holes into this? I wanna hear what those are. Because what I'm gonna do is after the fact, I'm gonna read your comments. I'm gonna figure out better and better ways in which to illustrate the unique capabilities of this polish. Why? Well, if you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm a pretty frustrated individual. Just like Tom Horvath, the formulator of this product, he himself was very, very frustrated, so he took action. So this is me taking action and saying like, wow, okay, I'm in a neat position. I've actually had the ability to use this for over 15 years now. It's been my, it's always been what I call my sure thing. So yes, I continue to test other products out, and yes, I can make any one of these products work because I have experience. But if you're a beginner, a newbie, and you attempt to do, the, to do this, you might become very quickly very frustrated. I don't want that because I've lived it, I've been there, and I know the frustration before I was introduced to this product. So I had to constantly finesse, or I would take a car that I was trying to polish as a mobile detailer in the direct sunlight. It's like, oh my gosh, this stuff is gooing up, it's gumming up, it's sticking up. I can't do it, so I'd have to find a piece of shade in order to work on the car. Well. That's the kind of frustrations I don't want you guys to go through, but those are the kind of frustrations that drive me to make videos like this and poke holes into this hyped up, embellished 
complicated industry. And it's not just that because now this industry wants to play both sides of the fence. So once again, here is my prediction. Any product line, any manufacturer that's still in business in the next few years that's in the polish or compound business, they will have their own version of a single product polish. I promise you that. You know why I'm so certain of that? Because they're already doing it. And this was developed over 20 years ago, so I know the technology exists. Which then would get me to ask, okay, companies, if the technology exists, and some of you already have it, at least you think you have it, 3M, Shoal Concepts, Meguiar's, Minzerna. Okay, if they already have it, then what's the dealio? Does your one step actually work because your three, four, or two steps are inferior? Or do your two, three, four steps, do they still work, but that's your backup plan? Like, which is it? That's, that, that's what I would call playing both sides of the fence. It's like, oh, if this is so great, then why are you still selling me that? Or if this maybe doesn't work that great, well, it's like, oh, well, this is good, but it's not really that good. It's not really a one step. It's kind of a one step that you have to finesse and be aggravated and frustrated over, but we've got our backup plan still, which is multiple products. So I see that as a problem. I see that as being duplicitous, playing both sides of the fence. I don't appreciate that, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. Tell me what you guys think. With that, I'll cut there, 26,543 words or less, but who's counting? I will see you on the next video. As promised, I wanna bring you in because this has been burning the whole time that I've been droning on, and I wanna show you further how this is not burning, but it is beginning to heat up further and further. More bubbles are forming. So really, really cool.